This video is a clip of a longer video where I show how to create this motion graphic scene from scratch. Click the card or the link below to check it out. Now let's do the drop shadow. Of course, we have an option that says shadow, so if we click it, we can see we do have a drop shadow. However, it's very limited. The problem is we don't have any option to move it. We don't have any option to blur it. We do have option to change its color and opacity. That's about it. So instead, let's make our own drop shadow manually. So to do this, let's move the text Mary up a couple of channels, and then I'm gonna duplicate Christmas up one. And then I'm gonna hide the top Christmas, and the bottom one will change this color to a black for the shadow. And actually gonna move them up a little bit more because we do need another space to add our blur. So with the bottom Christmas text, I'm gonna select that, press Shift A, go to Effects Strip, and choose Gaussian Blur. Now the Gaussian Blur and the text Christmas are using the same exact information. And you can tell by Shift right clicking on any strip. If you Shift and right click, you'll isolate that strip and everything else will be hidden. So let's select our Gaussian Blur and actually blur it by going to the Properties. And under Effects Strip, we can choose the size and I'm gonna type in 20. And if I scroll in here, you can see that it kind of looks like it's blurring, but we still have this crisp edge around the Christmas text. And the reason is for what I just said, we still have text Christmas uh, that is showing through from underneath. If you shift and right click our Gaussian Blur, we can see that that's just the blur. If you shift and right click our text Christmas, you can see the crisp text Christmas. So all we have to do is just hide the bottom text Christmas, and that just leaves us with the blur. And then the top text Christmas, which is still our white text, we're going to unhide that. And now you can see our drop shadow of the blur beneath, beneath that. And now we have complete control over the Gaussian blur in a lot of different ways. So we can grab it and move it. And the further we move it from the original text, the more it looks like the text is popping out or sticking out above the background. We can also adjust the blur, making this a little bit more. So if I type in 50 instead, you can see that's very soft blur. The higher it goes and then the lower it goes, the more crisp of a blur that we have. So I'm gonna put this back to 20 and show you another trick. If I take the Gaussian blur and the text Christmas and I put them into a meta strip, it's gonna group them together and I'm gonna rename this to Meta Christmas Shadow. And now we have an option down here of color. And if I open this up and adjust the multiply option, you can see it actually grows or shrinks the shadow, making it more or less prominent. And we can also adjust the opacity overall. So we can pull that down and make it more see-through. So everything we're doing is so much more versatile than the standard drop shadow that comes with Blender. Okay, so let's do the same thing here with Mary. Just gonna do the same thing, duplicating the text, adding the blur, hiding the black text for the blur. But here's a tip when you're doing these kinds of things and you're actually trying to match. So if we wanna match the shadows for both of the texts and not just shadows, but any sort of effect that we might wanna to do to them, it's best to make sure all of the origins and texts are centered in the middle of the resolution. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that by clicking in all of these places and pressing Alt-G to make everything in the center. So now we have something like this. Of course, everything's now overlapping, but that's okay. We can work on them one at a time. I'm gonna hide Christmas and then put the blur shadow in a meta strip, just like we did with Christmas. And we're gonna title it Meta Mary Shadow. And then from the meta strip, we can decide on all of our options, like the position and the opacity. So then we'll unhide Christmas and then hide Mary. Select the Christmas shadow first and then shift select the Mary shadow. Right click on our location. Do copy to selected on the X and the Y. So it's copying from the Mary shadow to the Christmas shadow. And then we can do the same thing for the multiply. Right click and copy to selected and the opacity. So now the shadows of Mary and Christmas should match each other. So now I'm gonna rename everything just to make it a little bit more consistent. So the text Mary, I'm just gonna say text underscore Mary, and then text Mary shadow. And then I'm gonna rename the blur to blur Mary shadow. 
and do the same thing with Christmas. And then I'm going to take the original text and the shadow and make another meta strip. And then we'll just title this Meta Mary for the Mary text. And then do the same thing for Christmas, Meta Christmas. And now I can take each of the meta strips and readjust them, moving the Mary up and the Christmas down a little bit so that they're both centered. And that way, if I select a meta strip and press Tab, once I enter into it, the text itself is going to be centered right in the middle for us to use any sort of effect or embellishment or shadow or anything. It's just going to be easier this way having it right in the middle. But when we tab back out, it will still be in the position that we want it in our scene overall. So this is good for our image, but I want to make a drop shadow on this just like we did with our text. So come back to the video editing workspace. We're going to do the same exact thing, duplicate our star, go down to color, bring the saturation all the way down and bring the multiply up to something like five. So now it is a solid white color, but we want the inverse of this, we want a black color. So go to modifiers, add strip modifier, and actually we can do it up here, of course, so we have more room. So add strip modifier curves, and we're just going to invert these two points here, bringing the top one over to the left and the bottom one over to the right. And actually that doesn't look all that good. Uh, we still have these weird artifacts on the edges. So let's adjust this a little bit more and we can actually bring the bottom one back over to the left and then the top one just slightly to the right of that. There we go. So now it's everything is all black. So here's the black shadow, but of course we need to add a Gaussian blur onto this and then hide the bottom star. So we just see our blur, select the Gaussian blur and then make this a size of 20. Now again, I'm going quickly over this because we've already done this step-by-step -step with our text. I'm just doing the exact same thing. So we can take the Gaussian blur and move that around a little bit off to the side. And then our shadow is cut off with our resolution. So I'm just gonna widen our resolution a little bit and then we can mess with the opacity. And then let's go back to our rendering, open up our image tab, select slot two and press F12. And that way we can go back and forth with slot one and slot two to see with and without the shadow. So let's go ahead and save this image out as red star two underscore shadow. And of course we got to change PNG and then RGBA, save image. And so we don't have to keep doing that every time we save out an image, we can come to the output properties and then change it down here. File format PNG and color RGBA. And now when we go to save it out, it will automatically pull that information over here. You can find this video and a whole lot more by going to my new website, blenderfrenzy.com, where you can access lots of free and members only content, including extra tutorials, downloads, assets, blend files, Q&A live streams, and much more. Signing up helps support me, which in turn gives you more Blender content, so head on over to blenderfrenzy.com and become a member today.